Well, now, now we come to the interesting part. <laughs> you want to stand or sit? Uh, I don't mind. You don't mind. What's your... Oh, sorry. What we'd like to do first, uh, I've already described one of my motions of self-deception that it took me seven years to get through. Um, thankfully, Mary's uh, a lot faster than me at most things, so, so it usually means that whatever takes me seven years takes her a few months or less. <laughs> so uh, that's how it's been. <laughs> that's, only, that's only because you teach me. <laughs> yeah, it's on. Is it on? Yeah, yeah it's on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which one is it? That one. So I thought I'd talk about a few of my emotions of self-deception. You want to hold it up like that? Like that. That's it. Yeah. Good. Um, because I've had a lot, and, but because I live with someone who's very good at picking up on them, I've, it has really changed my processing, understanding about these emotions. And um, it, it might take a bit to get your head around it, but once you do, it will really speed up your processing because you suddenly think, oh, hang on, I'm taking myself down a dead end again. So... Mm. Probably one of my biggest things was about um, when I, as I've told all of you, when I first met AJ, I got really triggered and I got angry and I got resistive often. <laughs> um, and what I found after a while, I connected to, well, firstly, that was a big emotion of self-deception, just the getting angry at him because he was pointing out things to me that I didn't want to hear about, so I just got angry at him. Then, a little bit <laughs> down the track, I connected to anger and resistance and shutdowns being actually very unloving to AJ. So what I did then was I went into, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible person because I've just done this to this lovely man. And I, I cried about, you know, I felt terrible, I hit myself, I cried about the fact that I'd been so awful to this lovely man and that I was a horrible person and I was responsible for everyone. That was also an emotion of self-deception because it got me very far away from the reason why I didn't want to hear these things from him. Mm. Yeah. So it wasn't until I recognised that that I could actually get below it. Mm. Yeah. So when uh, when Mary started to get below it, what what happened then? Like some of those emotions of anger that came up for you, what was underneath a lot of those emotions? So uh, yeah. So there was a lot of grief. Um, oh, firstly, there was a lot of feeling out of control. <laughs> I'm out of control. I don't know what's happening. What's going on in my life? Um, so have you ever been that angry before? Never, ever, right. ever in my life had I really been angry. I don't think. Um, and I wasn't screaming and yelling at AJ, but there was a whole lot of stuff coming out of me towards him mm. that was very angry. Yep. And occasionally I did yell. Scream and yell. Yeah. Yep. So, so <laughs> after you... <laughs> I, I have to be honest. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and when, when you started realising that the screaming and yelling was about deeper things and the feeling of your resistance and anger was about different things. What were those things that, that, that were really underneath those deception emotions and even the self-punishing emotions? Yeah. There was a lot of grief <clears throat> about feeling um, that men had hurt me, that I wasn't important to men, that this man especially would leave me, that his beliefs were more important than mine, his needs were more important than mine. It's a lot of grief emotions. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, and also you had some shame-based emotions, which were causal emotions. What, what yeah, I wanted to talk about that separately oh, a little okay. bit. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, another really... Because um, I'm really into the... I really want everyone to know about this emotions of self-deception because it's, it's awesome once you get it. Because it just speeds everything up. You don't waste time anymore. Can so I just describe, like... What, what happened with Mary was that like, she'd been in a lot of these emotions of anger and resistance and then getting into some and then feeling quite self-punishing. and Feeling horrible about myself. Yep. Yeah. And then, and then when, once I started talking to her about you know, all of these emotions of self-punishment, self-blame and all those kind of emotions are all just deceiving yourself so that you don't have to feel an underlying emotion. And when I just said, what's the underlying emotion? Mary instantly got into a lot of the underlying emotions. And once she realised that, it's like 
now Mary's like an emotion of self-deception fanatic, right? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Ask Paula. I'm on the radar. Uh-uh. That's not it. Not Paula. Right. So, so when we go visit people now, right, Mary's like, now it's another self That's another self That's right, you know. Like, You're kidding yourself. Yeah, kidding yourself again, you know. And it's, the reason why she feels that way is it's just so powerful to understand that actually you don't need to experience this whole set of different emotions that we often go ahead and experience because we're in fact these are all self-deceiving in nature and once we get over what how to recognize the self-deception compared to the actual emotion it just invokes so much power in our processing work and so much growth in a very very short period of time and that's why like in the last two months in particular Mary's made like lots of growth and many of you are already seeing some of that. Like she's a lot more outspoken. She worked through a lot of emotions about that. And a lot, you know, can can be definite about what she's feeling from people. Before she'd still feel it, but because she wanted to please you and because she wanted to make you feel nice and kind, you know, everything nice and fuzzy and warm for you, she wouldn't do, you know, wouldn't say it. But now, her love of truth has also grown so much because of again avoiding these emotions of self-deception, just <coughs> loving truth that it's just changed so much. So you want to talk about the shame thing separately, do you? Mm. Okay, no worries. <laughs> um, well, the other really important thing was the recognition around men and realising that I had an emotion in me that wanted to control and manipulate men. Um, and that was pointed out to me, lovely, through my law of attraction. Because I felt so out of control, I want to control men. Uh, I immediately, when I found that out, went, oh, I'm a horrible person. I would never do something like that. I'm a nice girl. And I went into all of this self-punishment, beat myself up. Um, I can't believe I've done this. I don't even know who I am anymore. What's it all about? Like all of this drama stuff that we were talking about before, mm. which totally got me out of the reason why I wanted to control. And that was a lot to do with the grief stuff that I was just talking about before. Mm. The shame stuff is a bit different because <coughs> we listed shame as one of the emotions of self-deception. However, there are some of the really interesting thing for me is to learn about when the emo there are emotions that are often self-deceiving, but they're sometimes quite causal. And they can um, appear in the same emotional process. So for me... <laughs> As I shared with some of you, um, there was a phase a few months ago where I was sexually projecting at other men. And I was in the relationship with this lovely man and suddenly I was sexually projecting at all, all kinds of men. And that was causing a lot of distress in our relationship, obviously. I, when I realised this was happening, immediately went into shame oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed of what I've done. Once again, I'm a horrible person. What's this all about? And I felt, though, that this shame was somehow... I was processing because it was around sexuality and it was shame. It wasn't at all. <laughs> um, what I'm finding now, though, is that there are deeper emotions underneath those sexual projections. So before when I was projecting... Sorry, I need the whiteboard. <laughs> it, like, it's so wonderful to see it like this. I just love it. Like, so before when I was sexually projecting and then I'd get into this whole emotion of self-deception, like oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed, what have I done? Uh, and I'd process and process. I thought I was processing what was really going on. What was really going on was a lot of different things about feeling out of control, wanting to feel attractive to men, and all of, all of this other stuff. And more recently, I'm connecting to some first century events, um, which are like the same as your childhood stuff. So right down here at the causal level, which also involves a lot of shame. But there's a difference between what I was doing up here and what I'm doing down here. This is all about feeling dirty as a woman, feeling like awful waves of heat coming through me, or things that are triggered sexually, that kind of thing. Not all of this, oh my gosh, what have I done? Oh, I'm so ashamed. That, that top cycle. Because the top cycle was really like a self-punishment shame emotion. Does that make sense? The bottom cycle was really, the one that was dealing with causal, was really 
the actual causal emotional feelings passing through Mary and, and her feeling those feelings. So one, one set of emotions is shame caused by the desire to blame yourself and, blame, and, uh, and punish yourself. The, and the other one is caused by, to you know, is actually accessing the underlying causal emotion. Is that, does that make sense to you? Yeah. What we're trying to illustrate to you is that you can have the same emotion as a self-deception emotion as you can as a causal emotion. The key for you is to see why, how they're different inside of you and how they react differently inside of you. Uh, for me, the whole divine love path is about being a detective in your own life. You've got the law of attraction. It's there to show you everything. But you also have to be in a detective internally. You have to be onto yourself. You have to be looking at what's happening. Okay, what's happening in my emotions? Am I realising things? Am I in a cycle? So it, it, there's no cut and dried, all these emotions are out and all of these are in. You just have to be good at recognising what's happening inside of you. Yeah, whereas, whereas now I sort of feel less like a detective in my own life. And now I feel more, more, more and more like I can just feel the emotion as it comes up without really needing to detect it beforehand. But when you begin, because there's so much self-deception going on, you do need to be able to tell when you're in this mode of self-deception compared to when you're in the actual emotion itself. Do you see what I'm saying? After a while, you'll get through all of the reasons of self-deception. And by the way, all of them boil down to one or two primary emotions. One of them is that I don't want to feel my castle of pain. So that's one reason why we get into self-deception emotions. Another one is that we don't feel that we can trust God. Right? So, so if, I, if, I don't, if I can't trust God in the process, then all I've got left to trust is myself, and that just feels too overwhelming on the path sometimes. And so we go into emotions of self-deception each time. Once I have fully learned to trust God completely, and once I fully embrace all of my emotional experience, including all the pain, and I have no resistance to it, what happens then is the emotions come up very rapidly. So for myself now, there is still resistance, but it's far less than I've ever had. When you start, that's when you have the most resistance, and that's why you need to know the difference between the emotions of self-deception and the actual underlying emotions. Is there any more you want to say about your own experience? Can you think of any other ones that I've had? Um, I can think of hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me. No, no. So, uh, but the main thing is that you understand the, the difference between the two states. In, in, the, in the causal emotions, your whole body generally is involved in its release and there is no projection of anger or blame or any of those kind of things towards yourself or others coming out of you. All right? So... A lot of times I see people crying, but they can only cry when there's, a, when there's an audience. Right? Now, that, that is usually a good indication that there's something going on about self, self, something self-deceiving going on. Or, conversely, we only cry when we're private. Right? There's some self-deception going on there as well. Right? So, so, a lot of times, uh, also, when you're crying... Um, <coughs> It's sort of like you're crying and crying and then it goes, and then, uh, but nothing seems, you, you, will, you will eventually get a sense within yourself that something, has, something big has changed. When you have your first real major causal emotional release, you will notice the difference between that state and the other emotions that you've experienced. And now that state for me is, is the state I recognise almost every time I process an emotion. So now what happens for me a lot is this really, my, this, my body just goes into this huge sweat and, and like I'm, so I'm crying but also my whole body's heat system changes completely and I can feel the emotion relie relieve, being relieved. So like a few weeks ago I watched the movie The Duchess, a few of you have seen that. So we decided to watch that and it totally gutted me about a number of different emotions. And for the next two hours, I just felt one heat thing after another heat thing after another heat thing pass through me while I was crying and cried for a couple of hours doing that. And, and the next day felt really quite different. And when you deal with causal emotion, most of the time you feel very different after you've, re after you've dealt with it. 
So that's another sign. If you don't feel very different and it's the same week after week after week after week, but you don't feel very different, then there's an emotion of self-deception going on probably, rather than the causal emotion. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. What Mary's done is uh, she loves looking at the f different forums on the internet where some of you post and uh, she's enjoying the interaction that you have between each other and also enjoying it from a point of view of from her developing her own teaching. And, uh, and so what she's done is she's got a long list of different posts that she's found on the internet over the last week or two. And what we wanted to do, and please don't feel uh, attacked or anything if you're one of the persons who, <laughs> who we're bringing up in this discussion. The reason for us bringing up this discussion is so that you can see the general principles of when a person's in a different state. Does that make sense? and you'll be able to feel that yourself. And if you do that, you can help everyone around you as well. If you know someone's in a self-deceiving emotion rather than in the real emotion, you can help them greatly. And if you know you're in the state, you can help yourself a lot too. So it's, so it's really important to see that our motive for doing this is not to expose those people. And it also, please do not stop posting those who are posting because you're actually dealing with a lot of emotions while you do, do it, even though it might be not exactly what you're thinking you're dealing with at the time. So we'd like to encourage you to keep doing this. And by the way, this isn't going to be happening every month where I get a list of all of the different people <laughs> and, and say, so this is self-deception. This is just a one-off in order to teach these principles to you of how to recognise self-deception. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Mary, who do you want to start with? Oh, no, no, it's not my idea. <laughs> I can guarantee she said to me, wouldn't it be good? And I said, that's a great idea. <laughs> No, I'm having an emotion about, it's about, it's related to me as well. It's about uh, public humiliation and that's not our desire at all. I, I think it's wonderful if we can all see our emotions of self-deception. So we come out with this wonderful idea and when in our discussion with like seeing the fact that oh, there's an emotion of self-deception there, there's an emotion of self-deception there and then when I said, oh, well, let's, let's do it in a presentation. No, 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 that's not a very good idea um, because of that fear. So we're not here to humiliate anyone and we're just wanting to sort of help you see when there's either reasoning, rationale of self-deception going on or emotions of self-deception going on. It will empower you immensely once you know what's going on and once you can look at it in, it with a, in a lot more detail. And, and really it has been a gift to me to have pointed out to me my emotions of self-deception. So that is my... Um, intention. To yeah, if I can just describe that process that we went through together. Um, Mary, for quite a few months, had been feeling really, really hopeless, like really hopeless because she felt like every single emotion that was coming up, the law of attraction was hammering her in a lot of different areas. And then she'd get just a little bit into emotion, think she sort of dealt with that, and then the law of attraction would hammer her again with the same emotion. And she got to this point, and as many of you, you probably have, of feeling just totally hopeless. Like, you know, what's going on? How do I deal with all of this? And why isn't anything changing? Is this just pointless, a pointless exercise? Then we had the discussion about emotions of self-deception, right, together. And once we worked through all of that, Mary just, like, felt a beautiful, like a really, really strong feeling of passionate desire to deal with her emotions. Like, it went from, didn't it? It went sort of from this feeling of hopelessness to this feeling of like, oh, this is fantastic. And we were talking about some really like <coughs> deep emotions in Mary that she was quite ashamed of. And yet she felt really buoyant and happy that now she at least had, you know, knew what was going on. And this is what we're hoping to achieve today with yourselves as well, just so that you can feel this really sense of um, joy about realizing what's going on inside of yourself. Does that make sense? So hopefully you'll experience part of that as part of this uh, discussion today. So um, who do you want to start with, Dan? You want to start with Dean, okay. I have a friend who I met in, in overseas. Um, Dean, his name is. I met through Helga. What happened was uh, I finished up spending 
uh, three days with Dean. Dean came from a, another place in the USA and stayed with me for three days. I invited him to. He'd never met me before. So you can imagine that. Like, he's just heard about me through Helga. Then he decided, he knew I was in the States, so I couldn't get to where he was, and so he decided to buy a plane ticket, fly to where we were, which he did do, he hired a car, and he stayed in our house with us. So he stayed in our house for three days. So I got to know Dean pretty well. And Dean is very, very enthusiastic about the divine love path. Um, obviously, Dean's got a lot, a lot of background in different religious forms, and he's always been so interested in religion generally, um, and all sorts of new age spiritualist movements generally as well. And that's how he actually finished up meeting with Helga. But what's happening a lot for Dean is that he has this emotion at times, and my dear friend Dean, you will get this tape as I know you will. So, uh, <laughs> from Helga. <laughs> so, uh, like I love you very much, my friend. And, uh, and, but, but there's some comments that need to be made. Now, the reason why we're making these comments is because it will illustrate to you what's actually going on. So what we're going to do, for, for Dean's sake here, as well, he's often said in the past that he's always received the DVDs three months too late. <laughs> and my feelings are that that's not the case at all, but I know Dean feels that way. Well, this one he's going to receive the audio of probably on Monday or Tuesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hopefully he will get that by then when he comes back from his retreat that he's on currently. What we're going to do is actually read what he's written and, and then as Mary reads it, I'm going to stop her and point out the deception. And, and the reason why we're doing this here is so that you can actually see when something's going on that's deceiving even in your words. Right? And what we'll hopefully do in the end of all of this is get to the point where you can see where self-deception is occurring in, in your life and, and hopefully for Dean it will be very powerful for him as well. So, Do you want to give a little bit of background about what actually happened? Uh, the background basically is that um, he had a relationship with a woman, um, her name is Elizabeth and uh, Elizabeth is another dear friend of mine who I've kept in contact with as well. But Dean and Elizabeth have had a breakup, and there's quite a lot of anger and animosity between the two of them for different reasons. And, uh, and that in itself is something that they're in denial about, both, you know, for different reasons. And there's a big law of attraction going on. Elizabeth towards her father-based issues, and Dean towards his mother-based issues. Now, as a result of that, a year ago, Elizabeth removed herself from the Yahoo Groups forum. And then, only recently, she wanted to come back to the forum and she made a few posts. But, of course, because of these, this animosity that's going on, this unresolved emotion that's going on between the two of them, Dean wanted to do something about her being on the forum. And so, he's constantly looking for any reason where he might be able to moderate her off the forum. So, what happened was he moderated her because of a comment that she was meant to have made off the forum. So the Divine Love Forum is no longer the Divine Love Forum, it's actually the Natural Love Forum now because it has a moderator. <laughs> Do you understand why? Free will. By the way, any of you, even if you create a forum of your own, the fact that you want to moderate it means that you are actually setting yourself up as the moderator of people's free will. That straight away is in disharmony with Divine Love as Helga, I feel, has pointed out to him. The fact that we moderate things <coughs> for any reason is actually also discounting our law of attraction. Can you see that? We're basically saying, I don't want that piece of information to hit me because it already has through my law of attraction. Right? So I'm actually preventing the law of attraction from operating in my case, which is actually quite harmful to your own soul because you've now stopped what could be a very healing process. So in, in stopping it or moderating somebody, you're actually preventing the law of attraction from working perfectly. So my suggestion, if any of you in the future set up any forums, that you forget this moderator thing going on and you just allow things to be posted. Now, people say to me, but like I had a, on the Divine Truth Forum at one point, there was this man posting X-rated material on the forum. It went on for a little while. And I had literally like every woman on the forum 
posted to me saying, why hadn't I removed this man from the forum? And my answer back was, it's your law of attraction. <laughs> when they started to deal with the emotions, the man just stopped, pros stopped posting on the forum. Does that make sense? So, so it was her, their law of attraction to deal with some sexual issues and so forth that were just being attracted. So every single thing in your life is a law of attraction. Please understand that. It's really important to understand that. Including so there's a bit spam. of the... Sorry? Including spam? Including spam. <laughs> well, you think about what spam about. It's about marketing. What's marketing about? It's about actually modifying you, what your actions are to suit somebody else's desire for money, basically, or your desire, or desire to let you know some things. So all of that thing is just... All of it is based on law of attraction still, with different emotions. Oftentimes we have a lot of difficulty accessing the emotion because we don't understand what the, how the law of attraction is working. Everything in your universe is the law of attraction. <laughs> when John, the Apostle John passed into the spirit world, in the first month I got an opportunity to speak with him about a few things. And one of the first things he said to me was he did not realise how absolutely every single thing that happened to him while he was on earth was including his neighbours, his friends, every single thing they did to him or for him, absolutely everything was because of an emotion that was inside of him at the time. So he had a neighbour who was quite violent and abusive towards him and that was his law of attraction. John complained about him constantly. He actually tried to take him to court a few times about different things he had done. All his law of attraction. And when he passed, he realised that all of this was my law of attraction. Right? And so once you understand that truth in a real soulful way, you'll start enjoying your law of attraction. Most of you still do not enjoy your law of attraction. So that's telling you actually that you want to reject your law of attraction which is actually preventing your progression rather than actually helping it. Can you see that? So anyway, that's the basic background. And uh, so let's see what some comments that were made. And what I'll, try, what I'll do is I'll stop, just stop Mary and discuss the self-deception emotions going on. Okay. I'll just read this one, hey? Uh, shall we start with the one that he... This one? <coughs> Which one was the one that he this said? One, this the one, long one. one. Yeah, that one. That's this one. Yeah, oh, sorry. that's that one. Okay. Yep. Okay. So there's a discussion happening, obviously, and he says he's responding to Teresa. Classic, classic marketing talk, Teresa. So we've got to stop there, right? He just deceived himself. He used uh, intellectual rationale of marketing talk in order to make a sarcastic attack on Teresa. Right? Teresa probably didn't even feel it, but it was his emotion of self-deception that made the comment. No, uh, she did because it was a law of attraction for her as well yeah. about something else. Yeah. Anyway. Fear, uncertainty and doubt. That's what he's referring to. You did absolutely nothing wrong and as I have indicated, should Rebecca acknowledge the truth, she will be welcome. Stop again. Um, no one has to acknowledge any truth. If you try to force someone to acknowledge a truth, you are now harming their free will. Is that loving? No. You are not in a space of love when you harm another person's free will. Simple. You can't say you love someone and in the same breath harm their free will. You don't love them from God's perspective. You might think you love them, but you do not love them. This is like, if we take it to an extreme, an abusive man smacking his wife around because she did something he didn't like her to do. Right? That's, that's taking this to an extreme. But it's the same action, of an unloving action towards a person's free will. I'm actually very hopeful of that, as she has threat as she last threatened me a couple of days ago. Can't, it's not a truth either. He's not hopeful of that at all. The emotion inside of him is one of anger. His action proves his anger. His action was to remove her from a forum, which is a public forum supposedly set up for people to, to get help on the divine love path. The actual feeling that he has is very different than being hopeful. He actually wants her to change to suit what he wants her to do in order for him to avoid his underlying causal emotion. That's his pure desire. 
So his pure desire actually is to stop her doing what she's doing because it triggers him. Many of you have felt that emotion with me, right? When I'm talking, <laughs> you feel like, I don't want to hear this, I don't want to hear this, how can I, how can I stop him? And it's the same emotion. <coughs> Mary's feeling really stressed because she feels we're outing Dean and no, we're no. not Dean, we're actually... We love you, Dean. We love you, Dean. Yeah. Hopeless, that's me. Emotion of self-deception. He doesn't feel hopeless at all, actually. Right? What he's feeling is underneath that, there is this thing with women that he feels drawn into interactions with women where women eventually hurt him. Does that make sense? And this is very much related to his mother that he, I think he may even live with her or has lived with her recently and, and yet still hasn't dealt with the emotion. And so it's a perfect law of attraction for him to deal with this underlying emotion that he has with his mother. And the emotion is he feels drawn into doing anything for a woman that he can only to find out later on that they abuse that trust or he feels they abuse that trust or they, he, they abuse that gift. But the emotion of self-deception is that he even wants to do it as a gift because in the end when he doesn't get what he wants as a result, he gets angry, which means the original action was not a gift at all. Okay. I can't tell you how highly I think of her. I believe she was my soulmate at one time before AJ. Yeah, we need to make a new, some kind of new, like, you know how it's before the, before the Christian era, after the Christian era? <laughs> now it seems to be before AJ and after AJ. You know, I have that, that definite segment in my life. Does anyone else? <laughs> me, AJ, A, AJ. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> the truth is that Dean at the moment does not think highly of Elizabeth. He would like to believe he thinks highly of Elizabeth, rationale of self-deception, <laughs> in order to feel good about himself. He's trying to tell himself that he's actually a loving person when in reality his actions have just proven that he's not a loving person in this instance. Now I'm not saying, Dean, that you're an unloving person right across the board. I'm saying in your interactions with women, you have yet to understand what love is. I could go on and on about all the good things I think and like about her. She really is an incredible person and I would encourage all of you to get to know her personally off list. So in other words, you're not allowed to get to know her personally on the forum. You have to now get to know her personally off the forum if you really want to know her. Via Dean. Via Dean. Yep. Now, the, there's some really, really strong emotions of control here. Now, he feels that this woman is controlling him. But in reality, because of his fear of control from a woman, which is related to his mother, he is now actually controlling her. And this is what we often do, right? What we often do is what we're afraid of the other person doing to us, we finish up doing to them. Right? And a lot of it is just deceiving ourselves as to what's the underlying reason. So actually, Dean, you're being very controlling and you want to control a woman. You want to control a woman because if you can't control a woman, she will hurt you and you do not want to be hurt. And that comes from a very deep emotion inside of you that you've been terribly hurt by women, in particular by your mother and the methods in which she used to control you. Due to the legal actions she is threatening me with, which again I can document off list with her own emails, I don't feel the need to censor myself for this group. Uh, that is totally untrue. He's actually censoring not only himself, because he's not telling you his true emotions about Elizabeth, but also he's censoring Elizabeth, so he's also censoring another person. Also, he's worried about legal action. Why would you be worried about legal action if it's your law of attraction? If it's your law of attraction, you'd be going into the legal action in the sense of you'd be actually feeling how that makes you feel. Now, for many of you, if you had legal action brought against you, how would you feel? There'd be a fear of authority, a fear of being wrong, the fear of being, you know, being other people thinking you're wrong when you might not be. You know, there's all these other emotions that might be triggered and these are some of the emotions that exist in Dean that he needs to allow himself to access. So, um, so excluding her based on her own choices, i.e. she resigned from the group voluntarily and with no consultation with me last year, seemed appropriate. All right. Now he's saying that the previous year when she resigned from the Yahoo group forum, she did it without consultation of him. 
<laughs> does she need to consult him? No, why does he feel she needs to consult him? Because she want, he wants to control her. Yeah. Can I just say, any time you want to control anything, you are always avoiding an emotion. Every time you're avoiding one of your own emotions, by the way. If you have issues with this, please email me off list and we can discuss. Why does everything have to happen off list? Isn't, isn't divine truth totally transparent? Why would something have to, have, happen to, have to happen off list? There is only one real reason. And that is so that somebody can control the whole interaction. Is it not? Right? Because you don't want an uncontrolled reaction from everybody, so what you want to do is control the reaction by having everything in an unpo or private forum. I'm sorry, but it's not harmonious with divine love. Everything should always be on list, if we could say. Everything should always be open and transparent. If, in the interest of full disclosure, something we discuss might be relevant to the group, it will be posted by me. So what's that saying? <laughs> That's saying, I have got total control over what all of you are basically saying and unless I decide that it's in th the interests of the group... So, hang a sec here, there seems to be a different God now. Sorry, Dean, but unfortunately, you're setting yourself up above God here. God doesn't even do that. Like, God doesn't decide, oh, no, Brian, you're out of line. Um, you're now off list, right? You know, Brian, God doesn't even decide that. So if I'm deciding it, what am I doing? I'm placing myself above God, really. There's a huge emotion in that. A huge emotion in that. And then you need to look at that emotion. I'm feeling very sad about all of this and would, like to have the cir would have liked the circumstances to have been different. Of all the lines that he said in that entire message, that was the only one that was truthful. The truth is that he is feeling very sad about his interactions with uh, Elizabeth and he would certainly like the circumstances to be different. However, that in itself proves some of these emotions of control. He's, he wants the circumstances to be different and so now he's going to make them different right, by controlling the interactions. So does everyone see what's going on there? A mixture of emotions of self-deception and rationale of self-deception all the way through the email justifying one unloving act which is just the unloving act of saying that you don't have your free will understandably a number of people have gotten quite upset with it and resigned from the forum <laughs> by the way that's an emotion of self-deception if you resign from the forum because of this interaction you're ignoring your law of attraction you have been triggered by by somebody being treated unfairly and instead of allowing yourself to go into that emotionally, you're saying, I spit the dummy now, I spit the dummy now, I'm going off in a huff too. Your law of attraction has brought you this event so that you could access this emotion within you. Focus on that, feel that. Stay on the forum and let yourself feel that to the end. Does that make sense? Let yourself trigger that. Where do we go next, darling? Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, a microphone if... <laughs> One's around? Just right next to you. Um, right up. Um, there are, we probably finished with that, but there were about a dozen emails off list exchanged by Dean and myself yep. till I just removed myself from it because it became rather pointless for me to keep answering him because yes. in the end he wrote to me stuff like he would like me to ring you and find out from AJ what he had to say about it because this scenario is very much like um, AJ did with Natalie. No, it's and not. I said, no, it's not at all. Not at what, all. Whatever I said was yep. just, he couldn't hear it. He didn't hear yep. me. He was, no. I just removed myself from the situation. But it went on for about a dozen emails. Yes. Now, what's happening is that obviously Dean's main issue is with women. Yes. So any woman who even tries to correct him Yes. And which you wrote a lovely email, by the way, um, you know, yeah, r <laughs> about free will and, and free will being loving and so forth. But any woman who tries to correct him will automatically not be heard. 
He treated me like his mother in the end. Exactly. That's when I and that's writing. the entire point. Yes. That's exactly the emotion he needs to get into, is what's going on between like him and his mother. He wrote things like, which part of what I just said to you don't you understand? <laughs> yeah. And you understand a lot more about it than what he does, actually, at the moment. So, Dean, listen to these women. They are teaching you a lot of things. And the point is, as well, is about the self-deceiving state that that Dean is in isn't it it's it's about the fact that he feels he's feeling his emotions but actually there's a big chunk of causal emotion that he's trying to skip over yeah yeah and the big chunk of causal emotion is with women like that's the interaction that's with women now some of you know that I had an interaction with a lady named Natalie the interaction was Natalie got more and more angry with me and she was verbally abusive to me and everything so so what happened was I sat down with Natalie and I listed to her five different causal emotions that she w were within her that she was denying. And then I said to her, Natalie, I will not be able to have any more interactions with you until you at least stop projecting all this anger and rage at me. In other words, until you stop treating me unlovingly. I love you dearly, and I've told her that since as well. And uh, as Mary knows, I do love her dearly. I often feel about her and think about her and talk about her. And I hope she does, and I know she will get back on the path one day. Yeah. But I will not allow anyone to treat me unlovingly. That's a totally different situation than controlling how a forum or how hundreds of people interact with Natalie. I have not prevented any single other person from actually interacting with Natalie in any way you desire. And in fact, I have a desire to interact with Natalie still, but not with her projecting anger and rage at me. Does that make sense? So, so I'm not suggesting you stay in, in unloving interactions with a person. So if Elizabeth was projecting anger and rage at, at um, Dean, Dean doesn't need to stay in that interaction with Elizabeth. However, what Dean is doing in this example is that he is creating anger and rage in which to interact with, right? Because all Elizabeth did was just post on a forum and she didn't post anything about Dean, as far as I understand. She You've might hear it, she might. But even if she does, that is his personal emotion. So all he needs to do is not interact with her, if that's the case, if he <laughs> feels that she is treating him unlovingly. Does that make sense? I have allowed Natalie to say literally hundreds of very, very, like initially what I found to be hurtful, now what I find to be quite amusing, things about me. Um, to lots and lots of people, some of whom have never spoken to me again, right? And quite a number of whom have never spoken to me again as a result, believing that Natalie must have been saying the truth. And so I've allowed that to occur and I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with that because I owned all of my emotion about how it felt for me. And she actually, Natalie believes I'm angry with her by actually saying, no, you can't do this, which is interesting. Like, there's this barrage of anger coming from her and I say, no, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be able to do this with me right in your face anymore. You're not going to be able to do it to me anymore. And so she then feels I'm angry with her by stopping her from doing it. Many of you ladies feel a man is angry with you when he tries to stop you from being angry with him. And if you let, allow yourself to dig deeper, you will find actually there's a lot of rage about your childhood anger about men and your mum's anger about men and your mum's mum's anger about men. And if a man tries to prevent you from having it, from actually directing it at them, you then get angry with that man. So before that point in time, I would, before I process this emotion I listed earlier with Mary, before I process this emotion of allowing a woman being angry with me and absorbing it, actually allowing her to do it and feeling that I was bad because I was a man, once I released that emotion, I no longer felt I was bad as a man, so therefore I would no longer allow a woman to do that without me saying, no, hang on a sec, I'm walking away from this. Does that make sense? And interestingly enough, once I did that one operation, from then on I've had no woman project anger at me in my face, aside from one lady recently which means I've still got a little bit more to deal with, obviously. Does that make sense? 
and that's what I'm working through now. So can you see how it all works, the law of attraction? The key is to allow yourself to work your way through those emotions. All right, what's this one? Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, you leave with this one. Put them on. Okay. This is just part of an email um, by Jeff. I did my fear doubt mediumship task yesterday, except I had to force the doubt and fear out of me because I trust AJ to an extent in that anything that he tells me is probably for my own benefit and that I won't react if I'm open to truth. So there I have to stop. Unbeknown to yourself at the time, you were in a state of rationale of self-deception. You were saying that I actually trust AJ and I feel that anything he tells me is probably going to be fine for me. But actually, every interaction we've had before then, there's been a real strong emotional blockage between of everything I've actually said to you. And also, I could feel in return a very, very strong emotion of anger and resentment towards myself. And I can recognise it to be the same kind of anger and resentment that your mum has towards men. Does that make sense? So that's the feeling coming towards me. And this is why the next set of events occurred. Does that make sense? Now what's happened after I wrote some terrible things about him is that all the fear and doubt has come to the surface and now I've been having dreams about aiming a sniper rifle at him and shooting him dead, punching him in the face for hurting me and other things like openly humiliating him. I know we're supposed to process this stuff in order sorry this crap in order to get to do this mediumship thing but I feel I forced this error onto myself and I now believe I'm in fear and doubt about you people as well as AJ. All right now so what the, what you're feeling is that somehow you might have manufactured these emotions towards me does that make sense that's what you were feeling at the time the reality is those emotions have actually been in you towards me and they're not even really towards me they're actually towards sort of like a father figure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. And so it's actually those emotions that you feel towards your father or towards a father figure, which if you think about it, you're very closely aligned to your mum's emotions about your dad, right, in the past. And so that's why those emotions exist within you. So what, is, what the interaction has done for you is it's actually triggered some causal emotion about some emotions you feel about your father. And because of the emotions you feel about your father, it's impossible for you to trust another male. And particularly another male who's sort of in a, in a role of teaching you truth. Does that make sense? So you can trust another male as long as he, you feel greater than him. But if you feel lesser than him, like you would with your dad, you now feel like very angry and rageful towards him. And that's very much an emotion to do with your childhood that needs to be accessed. So the key thing is to get out of this space of thinking I manufactured these emotions. You didn't manufacture them, what you did was beautifully access them through that, and that was the whole point of this mediumship exercise that we're on this, this month, is to actually access these deep causal emotions with regard to the father figure and, it, and to allow yourself to really get into those emotions. Yep, yeah, I know, oh, I know you've worked that out. Yep. Yep, throw away, just fire them at me. I'm. This is from Teresa. Is Teresa here? No, she's today? not here today. No. I am confused as to why I can be so angry at God and want to turn my back and yet have the knowledge that. That is not what I really desire at all. First, self-deception. It is what she desires. She does want to be angry with God and she does want to turn her back on God. Right? With, info, with our emotions with God, we need to be really, really honest about them. When we're honest about them, we can clear them. Right? So, you know, I often refer, and I have referred to in the past, you know, uh, was it uh, Dan sitting on the, you know, in the Forrest Gump movie, Dan sitting on the mast, you know, with his legs cut off from the war, screaming and yelling abuse at God, you kill me, you strike me dead, you, and he's swearing at him and so forth. <coughs> Often that's the emotion we feel towards God. But what we do is we go down this track of going, uh, uh, 
You know, from our childhood, Daddy always punished me when I yelled and screamed at him. So we then attribute that to God, that God's going to punish me if I yell and scream at him, right? That's not the case at all, actually. What God wants you to do is to actually be in your truth with God. So if you feel this way towards God, start saying it towards God. But don't try to convince yourself through an emotion of self-deception that you don't actually feel that way. Does that make sense? Let it out of you. By the way, it, you can't hurt God. And by the way, God doesn't feel hurt and nor does she want to actually strike you dead with a bolt, you know, of lightning. If she did, there'd be lots of us already dead, right? <laughs> Surely, as I am this angry, why am I not wanting to turn away? What is keeping me pushing at this? And I keep coming back here too. I had a feeling of wanting to tear my brain out of my head this morning. I have so much anger and hatred at my mind for keeping me stuck. That's a self-deception emotion. Remember, every time you go into self-punishment or self-blame, you are trying to get away from some underlying pain. It's more preferable to do the self-blame than the underlying pain. So every time you're in that state, you know, it's fine to be in it if you want to be in it, but understand it's the creation of your denial of the underlying castle of pain. And, and this is where she does what a lot of us do. I know this is wrong, not where I want to be, not helping me get to where I want to be. So I deny that feeling, but I have to feel my feelings. Then I dip in and out of it again. I felt, so much, so I felt such anger at myself for all the excuses I make to stop myself from feeling. And again, that is making me cry. So she's... <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> Mary's got some asthma today because she's going through a lot of fear about um, speaking publicly about other people's emotion. Because in the past, like, in our first century life, obviously... Um, Mary was in a position to do a lot of teaching but uh, often got really badly ostracised and criticised for any teaching she did and often her past was brought against her with every, every bit of teaching she did and so there's a lot of fear coming up for Mary doing this with you today. I apologise for my disjointedness. But Teresa's getting stuck in that cycle of, hang on, I know I shouldn't be feeling this, uh, but then I'm denying it, but then I should feel it. But what, and she's really just stuck all the way up here. Like, she's intellectually thinking about the emotion, then she's feeling it, and she's back into the intellect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game of tennis, you know what everybody does. <laughs> when they see everybody doing that, it's like... And, and you know what the emotion is? <coughs> it's an emotion. Well, no, no. What's she feeling right at this moment? She's feeling confusion. Emotional confusion. She doesn't need to worry about her head involved in the process. She needs to just go to her bedroom, lay down, feel her emotional confusion. And she'll feel it, like there'll be fear-based feelings all come up because of this confusion. There'll be body reactions when she feels the underlying causal confusion. Um, I felt such anger at myself for making all the excuses I make to stop myself from feeling. And again, that is making me cry. Want to cry, I'm not doing it yet. Just was interrupted by hubby. Why can't I let myself truly get into this? All right, law of attraction event, interrupted by hubby, feeling an emotion. Whenever anybody interrupts you from feeling emotion, you don't want to feel the emotion. If your child interrupts you from feeling emotion, you didn't want to feel that emotion. Does that make sense? So you're starting to feel an emotion. I have this happen lots of time when we visit people's homes and they've got children. We start talking. This happened just a few days ago with Jody and Justin, didn't it, guys? We started talking about something. The kids flock up to mummy, right? So, or flock up to daddy, depending on which person wants to deny their emotion at the time. And the reason why is that we want distraction, we get distraction. Does that make sense? Be honest. I want to be distracted. I don't want to really deal with this emotion. It's a beautiful way of telling you I don't want to deal. So she doesn't want to deal with that emotion of feeling that sadness. But instead, she's totally preferring the anger emotion towards herself. Anger towards yourself is just an emotion of self-deception. An emotion of self-deception 
comes from this desire to punish yourself rather than to feel what's underneath. In many of our interactions, we have parents who have damaged us emotionally and so forth, and instead of wanting to feel the pain of that, because we know our relationship with them will change when we feel the pain of it, we don't want our relationship to change, so instead we learn from a child time to actually punish ourselves for how we're feeling, rather than accepting the truth, which is actually my mummy or daddy was not loving me then. Does that make sense? And we often do that. Okay. There was just another little bit from Teresa as well in a different post, but it, it's similar to what you were saying. My daughter is running around saying she loves me at the moment. I thought I was feeling my unlovable stuff. I Notion guess, of self-deception. I guess not. Now, um, now she's really distracting me and I'm not clear on that message. I've lost my train of thought. Okay. I, I love you people posting on the net because you, you're really posting a lot of really good, important things for people to understand, actually. So, in this case, the daughter's running around saying she loves her. And then she thought she was dealing with her unlovable emotions. But what's her law of attraction? Her daughter wants to tell her that her daughter loves her. Why would her daughter want to do that? Because her mummy needs reassurance. Why does mummy need reassurance? Because she's not feeling loved, actually. So she is actually feeling her unlovable emotions. That's, but she's not actually feeling them. She's denying them. She's and, projecting. and projecting, love me, love me, love me, love me. <laughs> say that you, you know, that kind of thing, right? Say that you love me. And, and what happens then is everyone around, and particularly our children, come up and say, I love you, mummy. I love you, mummy. Or I love you, daddy. Can you see what's happening? they are actually totally driven by our own emotion of wanting to be loved. When our child feels totally loved themselves and, f and we feel totally secure within ourselves, you will each know and feel the interactions of love most of the time without having to run, have a child run up and hug you and say, I love you, mummy. And if you notice your emotions most of the time that happens, you will notice that actually you're denying an unloved emotion most of the time that that happens. Now, the second part was, now she's really distracting me. So, mummy's now said the words, I thought I was feeling my unlovable stuff, which is actually the emotion she needs to get into. I'm unlovable, right? I'm, and who comes up straight away and distracts her? From that emotion? Her child. So, what does she want? To be distracted. To be distracted from that unloved, unlovable emotion. Does that make sense? Yes. Law of attraction tells you, instantly what's going on <coughs> it's really wonderful hey when you see it all happening yeah. yeah when you see it the wonderful time is when you see it happening for yourself in your own life it's so powerful it is just so powerful it's amazing there's another one from Teresa yep um, so I, I won't read all of it. I'll just read the parts. Um, I don't know if I can cope with this. I just want to go and crawl under a rock and stay there at present. And I guess that may be why I haven't attracted the funds to come up for Saturday's session. Okay, so she couldn't make it today because she didn't have the funds to make it. And she's saying that she feels like she just wants to crawl under a rock and stay there. And I don't know if I can cope with my emotions. That is all self-deceiving. You can cope with your emotions. In fact, God designed you to cope with your emotions. And every time you get this feeling, and I've had a, an email exchange with, um, with a couple of you where I pointed something out privately, and the f initial response is, oh, I can't get it, it's all too much, I give up. Which is a total emotion of self-deception, total I don't want to feel, I don't want to acknowledge my law of attraction that's happening here. Mm. Then the other temptation when I reply back and say, hang on, you're just avoiding, is to then tell me a big story about all of the other emotions that the person is feeling as an excuse not to feel about what I'm talking about. So that's another emotion of self-deception. So quite often myself and Mary get a sort of barrage of different emails from people talking about all this emotion that they think they should be connecting with, but actually a lot of it is self-deceiving and a lot of it is getting them away from the actual emotion they need to be feeling. 
and the actual emotion that need to be feeling drove them to actually write the email, to write the email in the first place. Mm. Then Teresa goes into some, she's talking about the big debacle with Dean and letting the post go through and all of this thing. I know I let the original post go through without knowing any history, but now I'm, un and now I'm uncertain as to what to do about any further posts that need approving. If I just leave it alone and leave it to others, that feels like I'm copping out. My need of rules to live by is really being triggered at the moment. <coughs> I really hope and pray I can get through this um, fear, uncertainty and doubt, as I reckon this one's my biggie. Once I can break through this, perhaps then I'll have the courage to continue. Well, I have to get through it. I'm praying to God to give me the courage to do so. I feel like there's no turning back and only one way forward, lots of fear. And what she does there is what lots of us do all the time. Okay, I'm praying, God, this seems like a really big emotion. I've got to get through this. All right, intellectually, I can see what it's all about. When really the whole emotion is in her very last sentence, which is lots of fear. And she has a lot of fear about what other people think about what she does on the forum. So she's thinking it's all about this fear, uncertainty and doubt, when really it's just a very specific fear about the approval of others. I'm afraid because if I say what I really feel, other people will project anger, rage, all sorts of things at me that I won't be able to cope with. And that's the whole thing that's driving that fear. Can you see too the intellectual ping pong that we play with ourselves? Many of you have done this, so, so don't feel Teresa is the only person that's doing this. Like I've done this plenty of times, back, 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 until you get to this place where you don't know what to do anymore, so you just give up, which is probably what you should have done in the first place, right? <laughs> just give up and feel. <laughs> but what happens is we're constantly trying to analyse a lot of times what the emotion is, and the emotion is right there under our nose. In my case, I've got a big nose, so there's lots of emotion that fits there, right? <laughs> Some of you have smaller noses, so there's a little bit less, but right <laughs> often, <laughs> often it's right underneath our nose, the emotion. Does that make sense? And, and, and what happens when things are underneath your nose? <laughs> like, the only way to really see it is by looking in a mirror, <laughs> isn't it? Like, the only way to see it is really have a good look at yourself. Um, because most of the time it's only other people that can see what's un hanging under our nose. <laughs> um, by the way, the closer you get to the celestial kingdom, the more uh, uh, poor taste your jokes become. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, there were quite a number of times when I've received emails of people in quite strong self-deceptive emotions. One of the greatest ones that have been happening a lot to me because of my own law of attraction is this, emo this projection that I get from people all the time that I'm not Jesus, right? So every time they hear it on a DVD or you know, they hear me say it in a public setting, there's this resistance comes up within them and the first thing they want to do is tell me that I'm not Jesus and I'm actually Alan John Miller and then they tell me, haven't you thought about that? Like, well, yes. <laughs> right. The truth is actually, <laughs> yeah, I have thought about that. Right? <laughs> um, and, and I have had to deal with a lot of emotions about that, trust me. But um, <coughs> there's this feeling that a lot of people have that, that rises in them, you see. And that the feeling is like he can't be... Like many of you have these feelings, right? Even now, like, to be honest, the majority of you still have them, which is fine. He can't be... He's so normal. He actually, sometimes he's a bit crass. And sometimes he's a bit, you know, all of these yeah, different... doesn't have good grammar. doesn't have good grammar at all. My grammar's been shocking ever since I can remember. Um, you know, he doesn't use good diction. <laughs> And, you know, Australian accent, you know, how can that ever be possible anyway? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, like, all of these things get projected at me, which, which come from your own doubts and fears and feelings. Does that make sense? And their own doubts and fears and feelings are a lot of times huge judgments about Jesus, about what I'm meant to be like in your mind. 
many of you also have gone through this thing, well, why isn't he doing miracles? And why isn't he healing? And why isn't there this huge amount of people coming to him all the time? If he was so, like if he was Jesus, he'd be much better than what he really is now, right? <coughs> and I, that's my law of attraction. That's, that's certainly an emotion that I feel. And, and I have, like I was describing to Jody and Justin the other day, I have these strong feelings of, the differential between where I used to be and where I am now. And if you can picture what it's like to fall from a 20 seconds fear state to a first fear state um, in the moment, in, in, a, in a matter of moments and have the barrage of emotions hit you, you'll have a, a, an understanding perhaps of part of the grief that I have to go through at different times. So, so the law of attraction is that that stuff's getting hammered at me. So I've got to look at it and say, all right, so you know, I obviously don't want to stand up and be counted. You know, I don't want to have people notice me as who I am. I don't want to be outstanding. I don't want to do all of these things. These are all feelings that I have within me. But on the other side, there's all these feelings inside of yourselves. And those feelings are like, if he was Jesus, he would be doing these things. But see, many of you don't understand the truth about it. And that is that in the first century, I only did the things that my father wanted me to do. Does that make sense to you? Like, I couldn't heal anybody unless my father wanted me to heal somebody. And the feeling I have right at this moment is when I get myself into a state where God can work through me, it's exactly the same feeling I had in the first century. Once that occurs, then God will be able to work through me. But it doesn't mean God will start healing people through me. God will use himself through me, just like God will use herself through Mary once we get into the condition, but it may not be in the way in which you expect. And I have to also, as part of my progression, get rid of all of my expectations from my first century experience as to what I expect. All that has to go as well. Because then God can actually be, could, can operate through me completely. So uh, a lot of times what we're really triggering, when, when I say I'm Jesus and these emotions come up inside of you, What's being triggered is all of your religious concepts and, con and constructions about who Jesus is and what Jesus is and what Jesus would say and what Jesus would do and how Jesus would live his life. And, you know, oh, he's got this sexy woman with him. Like, like Jesus wouldn't do that either, right? Because Jesus is all holy and pure and, you know, like asexual, you know? And, and these are all these constructions that we have about belief systems that have entered us emotionally right from childhood that we need to allow ourselves to trigger. And part of the mediumship exercises are about triggering a lot of these kind of emotions and actually coming to your own feelings about all of these things. So what I'm saying is that everything that happens to you in your law of attraction, including you sitting in front of somebody saying he's Jesus, is a part of something that will be triggered inside of you. When you own that emotionally, you will actually not feel the need to tell me that I'm not Jesus. Does that make sense? Just like I don't feel, when, when Klaus comes up and says, oh, hi, I'm Klaus, I don't say, no, you're not Klaus. <laughs> I don't feel the need to tell Klaus that he's not Klaus, right? Klaus believes he's Klaus, so. I accept it. <laughs> I don't have an emotional need to convince him otherwise. Right? Although for many of you, to be frank, you are not the real person you could be. Um, and, and the truth is that this process is leading you to the real person you will be. And that's the beauty of the process, is you become the most powerful thing you can be, which is a beautiful, beautiful process. So, so the fact that we want to tell somebody else off or we want to tell somebody else what we think of them, generally also comes from an emotion inside of ourselves that we're deceiving ourselves about. Can you see that? So if, I, if my motive for telling you something is just to berate you, criticise you, correct you, then my motive is already all unloving. Can you see why? Because if I was really loving, all I would want to do is just be love and be in truth with you and not have an expectation of you that you respond to what, what I'm talking about in any way. 
So whenever I've got an expectation that you respond in a certain way towards me, I am now being unloving to you. I am now projecting at you a desire that I want you to satisfy in me. And as soon as I do that, I'm unloving. Can you see that? And this is why these emotions of self-deception, once we start recognising them, are so powerful to dismiss. Because once we start working through, oh, I'm needy. Bang, I'm into self-deception. Why am I needy? What's going on underneath? What do I feel? And straight in, you can get straight into these emotions because the law of attraction brought you an event which caused you to be needy. So therefore, the same law of attraction is actually triggering in a causal emotion which the neediness, the emotion of self-deception, is covering over. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> it sounded quite confusing, even to myself, I think. It was a right statement. But the truth is that the causal emotion is the thing always that attracts an event to me. Right? So the event is attracted to me. If the instant the event is attracted to me, I respond in an emotion of self-deception, right? It's the same cause, it's the same trigger event that can trigger either my causal emotion or the emotion of self-deception. Does that make sense? So whenever I'm in a self-deception emotion, I can tell myself instantly, actually, right now, right this moment, I am actually denying the causal. Do you see what I'm saying? So, like, if, if an event triggers me and I feel needy, or I feel like I want you to listen to me, let's say I feel like that, I want you to listen to me, right at that instance, the cause of my, my emotion of self-deception is, I need you to listen to me. The causal emotion is nobody listens to me. And I just need to feel that. So rather than me opening my mouth and, and force you into listening to me, I need to close my mouth, right, <laughs> and feel what's going on inside of myself, which is this terrible emotion that I'm never heard. Does that make sense? That I might as well be invisible because nobody actually hears me, sees me, wants to know me, wants to feel me, all those emotions. So can you see how when I'm in an emotion of self-deception there was a trigger and that trigger is also there to access my causal emotion? Because it's actually the causal emotion that generated the trigger. It's the causal emotion that created the law of attraction. Okay. All right, so now... Are there any questions? We've got about a quarter of an hour left and what I would like to do is have you ask some questions perhaps about the principles of this just so that you get it sort of firmly fixed in your own hearts and minds so that you can go away and actually start looking at your life and seeing what the causal emotion stuff is. All right, so maybe th first there and then over there. I have a five-year-old son. Yep whose name is Zen, and yesterday we went to the gym for his last gym day. And uh, it was a dress-up day and he dressed up as a pirate, which is very triggering for me, it's another story. <laughs> but he thumped the crap out of this boy all day long, until the teacher separated them, I separated them. And this has not happened before in that way, right. but he has another best friend, and they've got themselves regularly into conflicts, and, and they've begun to hit and push and shove one another. It's a fairly new thing. And yesterday was frustrating and shocking because here's my five-year-old boy just laying into this other boy and they would both get their wrestling out of control and really hurt one another. And the other dad was very passive yeah. and I was trying to negotiate and separate them. And um, I was really scratching my head about it, got home and talked to my husband and realising today that you're telling me that's a law of attraction event for yourself. something causal in me. Now, what, the question I have for you is, what was the emotion you felt when it was happening? Because it's the emotion that you were... Anger. No, it's Up a, front. Yeah, so the anger is a capping emotion. Just before the event occurred, there was the emotions that you were feeling. The emotions that you feel and then deny are what create the event. Do you follow me? Yes. So there was something you were feeling. Let's... And the fastest way to access it is, what did you feel afterwards? You felt anger, but there was also another emotion going on you about his mother, being his mother. I felt, 
I felt powerless yeah. and I felt embarrassed and ashamed that my beautiful boy was being so aggressive okay. and I couldn't stop him and I felt scared that I was having to parent somebody else's child yep. because the other dad was just like saying, oh, one day they'll learn and I'm thinking, if we don't show them, how can they, how can they learn? Yep. So I understand though that um, it's your emotion creating it. So mm -hmm. the emotions you mentioned, you were ashamed. Mm -hmm to be his mother. Mm. That's a fairly big emotion to allow yourself to work into. You got it. <laughs> All right. It's because when, how many of you, when you're mothers or fathers, you've got your child there and they act up a bit, and what do you feel? Like, feel like, oh, oh, oh I must be a bad parent. Like, what, what's my child doing? Like, you see, what you're seeing is them as a reflection of yourself. And see, this is definitely part of the, one of the causal emotions. Straight away, as soon as we say the truth, beautiful, into the emotion. So that's really wonderful. Does that make sense? So when we, get, when we just say that truth, so the key is the law of attraction event brought the emotion, the emotion is exposed. When I say that truth, I just feel so, you know, and then straight into that emotion when we actually say the truth of it out loud, oftentimes, straight into it. Does that make sense to everyone? Very powerful. There's some other emotions involved, but for the moment, that will do. <laughs> sorry, I don't want you to get out of that, but I know that was amusing, sorry. <laughs> um, it's beautiful that you're connecting to that. AJ, a question harking back to the, dis the distraction emotion or situations that we bring into our lives. What's the best way to handle it? Start to feel an emotion and we want to avoid it so we attract a distraction. Maybe I'm supposed to leave for work now or something. Do I stay and how do, how do we handle that situation best? The thing I would say is to um, look at why you don't want to feel the emotion. You, the emotion's coming up for you, but there's an emotional reason why you don't want to feel that emotion. So instead of getting caught up, oh, I've got to feel that emotion, I've got to feel that emotion, feel, okay, why do I not want to feel the emotion? What's my block there? So the first thing to do is to state the truth. I don't want to feel my emotion. Like, I'm just fooling myself if I say I want to feel the emotion and then I allow distraction. My, if my soul is allowing a distraction, my soul is creating distraction. If my soul is creating distraction, I don't want to feel the emotion. So I'm better off saying the truth. I don't want to feel the emotion. So that's the first thing. The truth will always open up the rest. Then ask yourself, like Mary said, the question, why? So, so do you send the child away or the husband and wife away or do you go to the appointment that you're supposed to keep or do you stay and work through it? The truth is right at that instant you didn't want to deal with the emotion. So okay. go and do the distraction thing. You might, you're better off doing that and being okay. truthful. I want to be distracted. I'm going to go off and be distracted. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? However, you could also choose if you wanted to, to say, all right, I wanted to be distracted. Why? So you could choose to do that too. And when you ask the question why, a lot of times you'll find some really deep fears in there. So you'll find like most of the time we distract ourselves because we're so afraid to actually connect. Like I've had some major distractions over the last few months of myself so that I don't have to connect with some fairly big sort of big picture emotions because I've got a lot of fear about them. So easiest thing to do is distract myself. Thank you. Jen? Is there a mic down here? Yeah, thanks. Um, this be on. Right up. I think I've been wanting to leave Graham from the very first moment I met him. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, we've now split up. Yep. Um, I get events from outside of myself, um, messages that I can't deny that come from good, good forces, car, the car breaking down, um, events outside myself that tell me um, not to do it, not to leave. Yeah. And it's set up inside of me a distrust, if you like, a trust more from outside of myself than from what I'm feeling within myself. I admit I'm angry. I can, admit... Can I stop you there, Jen? Because there's no need for you to say much more, to be frank. The, the, 
the truth is that you are very angry with men. And this is a deep emotion inside of you and it's caused by some really deep pain inside of you about men. And the issue you're facing is that you're very, very tempted in a relationship with a man to project all of that anger and rage onto the man and to blame the man for the way you're feeling. The, the underlying causal emotion is all related to your dad, as you know. It's all related to how your dad and how your mum felt about your dad. And that emotion is so painful for you still that there's this high temptation for you to avoid your law of attraction, to get away from it emotionally. So your desire to leave a, a situation that's triggering you is very much based around your desire to relieve your castle of pain. But it's not going to actually relieve it. It's actually going to, you're just going to attract other men who do the same thing. Does that make sense? So my question was, what do I trust? The messages from outside of myself that tell me to stay, stay in it, or the messages from within myself that tell me to run and be alone. I, I just don't know. Well, um, can I say the truth first to you? You don't want to be with a man. You don't want to. Because you're so angry with men. You just don't want to be with a man. You feel they're controlling, manipulative. They're going, to, they're going to, you know, they control your life. You have to bend your life to suit them. There's a lot of feelings that you have about it, right? The truth is you don't want to be with a man. The truth is it would probably be good for you to be with a man who allows you to feel your emotions and to trigger those things. But it just depends on whether the man's willing to do that with you. But at the moment, the truth is you don't want to be with men, so don't be with one. Thank you. I'm not saying that that's the best place to stay, by the way. Mary, you want to you wanna say something? Uh, I was going to say something completely different, and awesome. that is that I don't think that there are... Like, your soul controls everything, even if it's spirit influence. That's connecting with something in your soul. So... There are no things at, outside of yourself in terms of your law of attraction. So if your car breaks down, that's, that's associated with your soul. That's, that mm. was the point I was going to make. Mm. And if you have spirits come and talk to you, that's your soul. So there's something obviously in your soul wanting to deal with this emotion. But the truth is you also have this other emotion going on of terrible, terrible fear about getting into an open and vulnerable relationship with a man. Yeah, My, you attracted Graham for this very reason because your soul wanted to deal with these issues. So I agree with AJ, if you don't want to be with a man, don't be with a man. But recognise that there's, there's some serious stuff going on in there about that. And if you don't be with a man because that's the most loving thing for both you and him at the moment, don't ignore everything else that's going on just because your castle of pain's a bit relieved because that's a temptation. I just don't feel love at all. I'm completely in a place of shutdown. It's very difficult right this moment to actually so have a concept of what what love is, what the loving thing to do is, how to even, yeah, I just am, I feel frozen. Yeah. If you be in your personal truth, Jen, just but be in it. When you feel frozen, Jen, too, when you, and this is a common thing, when we feel frozen in our emotion, we are not in a state of truth with regard to our emotion, right? So frozen emotions are all about trying to get away from the truthful condition. Does that make sense? So there is a desire in you to get away from the truthful condition still. So pray to God about that. Talk to God about why you're wanting to run away from truth. Does that make sense? To pray specifically about that, just that one issue. Why am I wanting to get away with truth? I feel this desire and, and the need to be with a man, but I can also feel this terrible rage and anger with men that I have inside of myself and I don't want to be with them. So what's the underlying reason? What's the fear that's driving my choice? Allow yourself to see the truth of that. When you're frozen, you're actually avoiding any truth. So, so you're allowed to be in that state but it's a state of emotion, it's an emotion of self-deception in order to get you away from the pain that's there. I have been in that state myself with regards to AJ, like completely shut down, completely not wanting to feel a great deal of pain. So just hang in there and 
pray about it. Yeah. yeah. What did you do, darling? If you could just explain what you did when you were in that state. Well, I I decided that okay, I'm totally shut down. I'm going to be in that truth. That's it. I don't want to feel any emotion. I I can't connect with this man. We broke up. I went to work. I was still working. I did my thing. I went. I can't, I don't. I obviously don't want to be on the divine love path because I'm not feeling my emotions. And within two weeks, I broke through into some serious emotion just by telling myself the truth every day. You don't want to do this, Mary. You don't want to feel your emotions. It got unbearable and I broke through it, yeah. And the breakthrough was actually a connection with God, wasn't it? Yeah. There was this issue that Mary was having with God about all of these emotions and all of this situation and so forth. AJ? Yep, fire away. Um, I've got to say, all this started when we were camped on the sanctuary. Yep. Um, it really brought up some stuff, you know. Yep. And for me, um, it's been like, you know, I know what you said to me about the way I've been trying to help women and stuff like that. And it felt to me like um, I'd been, I couldn't handle the projections of anger any longer. Good. And that means your self-esteem is growing. Yeah, yeah, and I just had to say enough's enough, you know. Yeah. So I, I precipitated this split. Yeah. And uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I just stop you now? See, I, he allowed you to say everything. You're not allowing him to say what he's feeling. So straight away you're in an issue of trying to control the man. This is a part of your anger, Jen. This is a part of your emotion of self-deception. You need to stop this. Even if he's not telling the truth, you need to stop what you're doing. You're doing it because you want to control him. You're doing it because you have anger and resentment towards the male and you want to control him. And this is the, un this is the capping stuff and there's a lot of deep causal about this, Jen. So allow him to speak. You, we allowed you to. So, uh, like, I've become aware that I have been trying to control her and, and you know, because of my own fear of control. And, yeah. And so I was thinking, you know, is it that we're splitting up because I think she should go off and deal with her stuff so that she will change? Um, but then I thought, no, that's not the right approach to have. It has to be about me. Yeah. And so it's been, for me, about... Um, uh, taking some contr control back into my life and I realised that I had been w what you've be just been saying about distractions and stuff that um, there's been a law of, dis uh, of attraction with respect to distraction as well like um, my can, I, can I just stop you uh, you have used the word control quite a number of times already and uh, something I'd like to highlight to you is because you have such a fear of being controlled by women you then have a, like, there's this feeling inside of you of wanting to get back control. Underneath all of that, Graham, is this strong desire you have to actually please the woman in order to feel valid as a man. And there's some really core emotion in that for you to feel. So, so like, at, w when Mary went through this emotion where she, where she said, no, I couldn't, can't have anything to do with you, AJ, I, of course, went through a lot of emotions too, because... Like, I, I dearly love her and I want to be with her and things like that. So I had to own all of this emotion inside of myself and let myself feel through a lot of emotion about how I felt about it. And I released a lot of causal emotion about feeling unattractive, feeling unwanted, all those kind of things. But I also started to look at some emotions that I had of wanting to please the woman in order to, to get love from them, right? And then what happens with you is you want to please them, to, to get love from them, and then when that doesn't happen exactly the way you feel it should happen, you then go into shutdown. And that's when you flick back into wanting to control. So this is what you did when you, in your childhood too, if you think about it. What happened was you'd often get a barrage from your mother, right, in terms of this, not, not barrage verbally, but this barrage of emotion of you, you know, doing what mum what mummy wants so that, so that you, you can get her approval and so forth. And then when it was all too much for you, you just went into yourself. You went into this private safe world within yourself then so that you didn't have to even feel her projections anymore so this is some, this is something that you do and it's a reverting to a childhood behavior that you need to allow yourself to see yourself doing 
and, and, and look at the underlying emotion of what you feel in that state and, and connect with that and release that. Can you explain that a little bit better? Um, the behaviour, and this applies to many of you, when you're told an emotion, many of you then go into this really state of, oh, you know, wanting to do this kind of thing, you know, go into the fetal position and really, I don't want to hear anymore, I don't want to hear anymore, it's all too hard, right? And, and we get into that state and then what we do as an adult generally is we then start trying to feel like, you know, we don't like that state very much. So what we do then is we often go into a meditative state to get us back, get us back some control. But this state, this, this, what is it? The, what, what, what is this called? The fetal position, isn't it? Is me withdrawing into myself because I don't want to feel something. Does that make sense? Whatever that feeling might be, it might be loneliness, it might be whatever the feeling is, it will be different for each person. So when I'm in that state, I need to recognise and allow myself to feel that underlying emotion. But understand that this was a tool I used. When I'm in this state, I'm no longer an adult, so I'm now in a childhood emotion. And this is a tool I used when I was a child to help me. So I allow myself to feel that. I've done this plenty of times myself, right? Where I've laid on the floor in this position, fetal position, sobbing my heart out, without any, my room dark, every, nobody around me, and I've been in that state sometimes for hours and hours and hours at a time. Sometimes I even locked myself in my own cupboard and was in this state for hours, just feeling that state. Just like you would as a child, right? And work your way through a lot of that, just let, release that emotionally. And then when I came out of that state, I would feel much, much lighter and, and also I could see very, very clearly the situation and I didn't need to control it. So you'll find if you allow yourself to do those kind of things, which are quite extreme, but if you allow yourself to do them, you'll actually work through the emotion. It's a childhood emotion of withdrawal. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, thanks. Because yeah. when, when we get a barrage of anger from somebody, it's highly tempting if we're in a state of receiving that anger of withdrawing. It's very high. Most of us are either an angry person or a person who receives the anger. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because of the law of attraction? When we receive the anger, most of us get into this state of wanting to withdraw, just wanting to shut down, like it's all too much. It's our law of attraction to trigger some underlying emotion. In my case, most of the anger barraged at me is all about fear. I'm afraid of being in truth, or I'm afraid of some first century events with regard to men or women, or I'm afraid of being tortured or hurt or harmed, all of those kind of things. So it'll be different for all of us depending on what happened when we were children. <coughs> All right, well, it's actually uh, 25 to 6 now, so it's time for us to, to stop. And may I just say to everyone that, that allow yourself to actually see this discussion as a discussion allowing you to really empower yourself into dealing with emotions rather than staying in emotions. Do you, do you see the difference of what I'm saying? Allow yourself to see that this is going to be a tool that you can use, this discussion, when you replay it over again, to actually start it looking at yourself and seeing whether you're wanting to stay in an emotion or actually feel the emotion till completion. And the staying in an emotion in a roundabout fashion <coughs> is obviously not very helpful to you and in fact can be quite harmful for you in fact, it can be also quite harmful for your health. Uh, most emotions of self-deception is very harmful uh, physically uh, to your body as well. So if you find yourself getting really run down and really down and depressed, rather having an emotion and then a relief, then you're actually usually in an emotion of self-deception. Um, we'd like to thank you again for your donations too, myself and Mary. and. Um, Tomorrow's session is a, going to be a question and answer session about anything you'd like to ask questions about. <coughs> so you're welcome to come along tomorrow. Um, you want to say? I just wanted to say there were some people today who didn't get a handout. If you're coming tomorrow, I can print some so you have a copy. If you just want to raise your hands. I know there's one gentleman. Okay, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, more. seven, eight. And is there people out the back, Dennis? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay.
What we, might, what we do too now is I send out all the hand out, handouts on the email list, so any of you that are not on Peter's email list, if you can uh, add yourself to that list, you'll automatically get the handouts after the groups. The, the, the handouts will also be available on the net sometime soon. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your time, everyone. Now you got to go.